I myself in 74, when Pune Ashram started, I went there with... When I reached Pune, I had only 300 rupees, Indian rupees in my pocket. After the ex journey expense, that was my salary. Within. Nepalese salary was too low, so I have one month salary I was I have converted Indian currency, so when I landed at railway station in Pune, I had 300 rupees. I tried to snatch my money and spend my money and live there as long as I can manage with 300 rupees. So eating cheapest food, staying in the cheapest place, a lot of people were doing that. Banana was very cheap those days, at the cheapest food available. So I do it many days only on banana, only on banana, because that is the cheapest eatable available in Pune. I could survive with my money for one month. And I suffered, I tortured. I was half hungry. I was eating just few banana, nothing. My suffering ended the day my last money finished. <laughs> that was the cause of suffering because I had some money and I was stretching that money. I wanted to live it more out of that money. When the last coin Finished, I had nothing. My problem also ended that way. <laughs> then I lived for many months without any money, without touching any money. There was no support. That time there were no friends. Ashram was very small. There was no facility in the ashram. Ashram, ashram itself was poor. It could not support people. Then I lived for many months like a prince without money. I have written the whole story in my book, coming book, in Wonder with Osho. The whole misery was my trust on money. The day, the last coin I spent, and I will become, I became penniless. I had no option but to trust the existence. <laughs> there is no other option. Then my golden days started. I lost weight in one month because I was malnourished, eating only cheapest food possible, and only one time a day because I wanted to live longer with small money. But after my money finished, I started gaining weight. <laughs> you will read everything in that story. It's a very interesting story. It's existence protects, that's what Osu has said. That unless you trust on money, your security, your bank balance, Existence waits. It does not help you till you don't have hundred percent trust. And you have trust on bank balance, then you depend upon bank, credit card. When all credit limit is finished and you look into the existence, then existence supports. That's my experience and that's the experience of thousands of people who came to Bhagwan. They came, especially people from Germany, from France, from Italy. They came with a limited money for limited period. And some of them, 
When their money finished, they returned back to their country to earn. But some somewhere there they will they didn't don't like going leaving Bhagwan. So they stayed there and they stayed till the last day of their life. Or till the last day of also. Without money. I don't know how they manage visa. That's a big big, big mystery. So existence protects how they manage visa because they are foreigners. They have to. They have more difficulty than us. Uh, Nepalese don't need visa. At least I had not that problem. But lot of friends who joined me in seventy four, they stayed in Pune till Bhagwan was in body in nineteen ninety. I don't know how how they survive. I remember one of my friend, uh, Krishnarayan Bharti. He was from Bihar. He is a retired school teacher. Not very much educated. I think he was a school teacher in primary school, so he, he didn't know English, he knew only Hindi. He joined Osho, he came to see Osho, but he didn't feel like going back, so he stayed in the ashram. After some time he was given the job of cutting vegetables in the kitchen. So he became famous as a Gajar Baba. <laughs> he was shaping the Gajars in the kitchen. He did it for more than 30 years. Same, same work. Around 30 years. He just did the same job in the ashram. Cutting the vegetables. He didn't have any money. No education. Does no English. Ashram provided him after, after some time. Ashram provided him free pass to enter because in the beginning, the Dirul Bhai, when we were working in the Ashram, we have to buy entry pass also. So I was also sometimes washerman or dishwasher in the Ashram or garbage man, or toilet cleaner, and all this job. So to clean the toilet in the Ashram, I have to pay entry fee, 10, 10 rupees. <laughs> then I was allowed to clean the toilet. The rules were such. After working one month, only you are given free entry pass. If you have worked one month, satisfactory. If your coordinator is satisfied with your work, then you are given free entry pass. And if you have worked for more than six months, and your coordinator is happy with you, and you are a good fortune, then fortune, then you get food pass. That was not certain. You know that is true. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> so Gajar Baba, after six months, he got the food pass. But no place to sleep. No accommodation. Because the ashram was small, overcrowded, there was no room. So he slept here and there. Food path, sometime in somebody's balcony, some sometime under the tree. Then finally he settled down. He made his permanent residence at Burning Heart. At Burning Heart there is a there was a great farm where body was burnt and it was covered so that protected from rains. So he along with some other friends, he made their permanent residence in Burning Heart. That was free. That's the only place where you can sleep free. <laughs> and more than 20 years he slept in the Burning Heart. He was one of the happiest person in the ashram, all the time laughing, radiating 
love and joy and happiness. When Bhagwan moved to Rajdhispuram, people wanted to have the darshan or visit Rajdhispuram. Even the rich people, uh, Indian people, have difficulty in getting obtaining visa, and also it was expensive to travel. Only few Indian and only limited Nepalese people could manage to go to Rajnishpuram to have a darshan. I think from Nepal we were only less than half a dozen sannyasi who could manage. And from India also it were limited people who could manage the visa and money to go to Rajnishpuram. Gajan Baba has a great longing to the have darshan of Bhagavan and see Rajnishpura. So he is the only Indian who attended all world celebration in Rajnishpura. There were five celebrations from 81 to 85. And he was the only Indian <laughs> who attended the all the five celebrations. I could attend two, 83 and 85. Because I, I was trusting on money, he was trusting on Osho <laughs> directly. <laughs> so in 83, when I was from Tokyo, I was flying to Rajishpuram, I was surprised to see Gajar Baba in the same plane. I think from Delhi, from Delhi to Tokyo, when I was going in here, India. I saw Gajar Baba also in the same plane. He has a jola, a two piece of gown, hand carry, only hand carry. <laughs> he used to wear this type of gown, no, one gown, two more gown in the in handbag, hand carry. And to my surprise, he didn't have even a suit without chappal. But I asked him what happened. He said, I had an old sleeper which broke at the air, airport, so I threw it away. <laughs> so he was in the plane without a sleeper, without suit. <laughs> Rajeshpuram was cold. When it used to rain, it used to be get cold and it was very cold in the winter. And he had nothing except one gown and two gowns in his bag and then one tongya in his bag. He had nothing. I don't know how he survived. He has this for him. Very adverse uh, climate. Sometimes it, even in, during the summer, if it was to rain, it used to, temperature will fall down immediately. You need even in the summer, June, July, if it rains, the temperature will fall down to zero. So you need sweater or cold. He has nothing. I don't know when a lot of people were refused visa, who have bank balance, who could show that he has a property. They were refused visa. Many sannyasi, Indian sannyasi, who wanted to go to this program, they were refused visa. And American embassy that time was very particular not to allow sannyasi to go get visa. Especially Indian sannyasi were not getting, were great difficulty in getting visa. I don't know how Gajar Baba managed visa, ticket, he knew only Hindi, how I traveling alone, how, how is, he was managing his journey, but he is the only Indian who attended all the five world <laughs> celebration. The world celebration was the minimum contribution for seven days was five hundred dollars a day for seven days. Then, if you extend your stay, you have to pay every day forty dollars. That was the requirement. 
And I know he didn't have any money, but he lived for months. He had this program, he came back, again worked in Pune Ashram, again next year he was in this program. And to great surprise, because nobody noticed him, he was a very simple person from a village. Not a very important personality, so nobody uh, noticed him in Ashram. He was a happy person, cutting vegetables all the time, radiating happiness and gratitude and love for the Master. To great surprise, in 84, when Bhagwan declared few people, Mahasattva and Bodhisattva and some Buddha, people were surprised, surprised that there was a name of Gajar Baba, <laughs> some Krishna and Hati, among that, that list. I think he was the very fortunate, because only few Indians were included in that list. One very limited Indian was included in this list, and Gajar Baba was one you know, on the top. So then everybody is looking, started looking, who is Krishna and Bharati? <laughs> A sannyasi even at this point used to walk without sleeper. <laughs> when he was included in that list, you no? Know, that he is a bodhisattva. Then people search who is Krishna and Bharati, and when he was found, the people purchased shoe for him <laughs> or sleeper for him. He was a happy person, and he was an example of what Vosu was saying that existence protects. If you trust, if you follow your feeling, I have lived two, three times in Pune without money for months. I used to go that, that time my salary was in a very limited. I could only manage my traveling expense and few hundred rupees when I used to reach Pune. I was always going for ten days with ten day leave. I never feel like coming back so I stayed for four months, five months, six months till I was thrown away by the ashram or by Osho that go back to Nepal. I never wanted to come back. When he pushed me back, then I had to come. And the rest of the time, existence protected. And this not one time. I have lived there many times. All, I was always miserable till the money, I was trying to manage money. The day money finished, all my problems finished. It's not only my story, it is the story of many people, many sannyasis. 